How's it going, everybody? My name is Mustang, and welcome back to some more BeamNG Drive. Now, I'm sure it's no argument to say that the VVOS is easily one of the best vehicles in the game. Ever since it got introduced in the Italy update, it's been one of the BeamNG community's top picks vehicle-wise. And it's kind of hard not to see why. With all of the configurations for the vehicle itself, as well as a crossover variant that's on the same platform, it's kind of hard not to see why it's one of the top picks. But we're forgetting, this is the Beam and G community we're talking about, and every time the devs release a new vehicle, the bar raises significantly for the standard. And with some of the mods that have come out for the VVOS during the past few years, it kind of leaves a lot to be desired from it, which is why in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three mods that make the VVOS all that better. And hey, remember, if you like what you see and want to see more, maybe consider hitting that like button. And hey, while you're down there, maybe also consider subscribing. But without further ado, on to the first mod of today's video. Now, the first mod goes by the name of the Charrier Monaco. And as you can see, it turns the VVOS into a convertible. Yeah. Another convertible mod for BMG. That's honestly not too surprising considering they seem to be getting more and more common as the years go on. And hey, that's without even mentioning that about the fact that the car itself has two doors, which it's kind of surprising that there isn't a two door hatchback version of the VVOS. Because I know two door hatchbacks exist in real life. I've seen them on the road. But, anyways, with that slight little side note out of the way, uh, as for the model itself, it looks pretty good. Uh, it has a little spoiler-like thing, which I don't know if that's safe for your head there. I don't know, I feel like that would be a bit uncomfortable, especially if you uh, want to have some fun out on the road. And uh, the interior itself is pretty much the same. Like, everything here is the same. Uh, it's got a manual transmission, there's that. Uh, the roof is obviously gone. There's a little bit of weird... Like it's uh you can see the inside of the pillar that's strange all right but yeah uh as for the 3d model it's pretty good the doors open as as you should expect them to open it's still the viva it's like the front end is pretty much unchanged i mean maybe the doors are slightly longer i don't know they look be slightly longer and the trunk does open as well with its own custom animation with uh and then it actually uh, looks a bit weird also it kind of clips into the spoiler a little bit uh, that's a bit weird but hey that's fine uh let's drive this thing around to see how how it drives it should feel a bit more sporty i mean it's a convertible oh i don't know why i am going around in circles but okay here we go now here's the road it this is the arsenic version it there are several variants including diesel versions they're all based off of the vivas however there are also tograk versions which i'm sure are based off of the uh that weird nissan convertible suv that they did in the early 2000s i still don't know why they made that thing it is ugly it's one of the ugliest vehicles to ever see the face of this planet but with that slight rant out of the way this this car actually looks better than uh the than that weird crossover thing. I, I forget what it was called. I think it was called the Murano. I don't know, someone can correct me in the comments section, but yeah, this is the S model, the sport version. I mean, yeah, no, duh. This is technically, it's based off the arsenic version. I mean, this thing not only looks better than a crossover convertible or SUV convertible or whatever the heck the Nissan Murano was. I should really stop mentioning the Nissan Murano. But I really remember when this thing first came out, when I first saw it on the repository and I tried it out. This spoiler thing wasn't there. It was just a it was just a modification of the 3D modeling and the trunk didn't even open right. It looked very, very strange. But it is a lot better now, obviously. As you can see. And it looks a lot more, I guess, proper instead of just like a, a mesh swap. But there are still some issues like there's obviously this which is where the door handle used to be for the the back doors but I'm willing to look past that because hey it's a convertible and 
and we don't really get convertibles that often oh i just yeah the glass it breaks a bit weird too uh yeah there i never noticed that before i'm glad i do now wait okay no look oh that is weird the glass is invisible from the inside okay yeah that's a thing hey maybe that should be looked at as well hmm but yeah that's just a, that's the monaco for you anyways on to the next vehicle or next mod i should say all right this next mod is a bit more family friendly this is the vivos and tolgrac wagon which at from a mod name like that it's pretty obvious is what this mod does it turns the vivos and tolgrac into wagons however the tolgrac looks a lot more like an suv more than anything i mean just look at this this looks a bit big for a wagon personally however it does i do see some super outback vibes from this i'm getting a lot of outback vibes from this or at least the outback that we get here in the states because they label that thing as a crossover even though it's very much obviously a wagon with race suspension but yeah this looks more like an suv as for this thing this is definitely a wagon and i don't know i like the wagon look it looks very nice the modder did a very good job uh modeling this like and obviously all the doors do open including the trunk Ooh, okay that thing opens up with the trunk okay that's nice that's a nice touch and yeah obviously it's a different trunk too like pretty sure this part of the trunk is not in the normal v-boss but yeah now you can haul the kids around in a in a french station wagon which there are a lot of I've seen pictures of them, like there's Opal, Peugeot, and uh, Renault. That's the other company. Wait, is is Opal French? I don't remember. But I know Peugeot and Renault are. And Citroën, I'm pretty sure, also has a wagon variant, which wouldn't be surprising. The French also like hatchbacks a lot, uh, I've heard. At least I've heard, that's what I've heard from uh, Top Gear slash the Grand Tour. But anyways, uh, well, but that side note out of the way uh okay the trunk opens the same on the tow rack makes sense they're the same they're the same car essentially except different well they're not the same car but they are you know what i mean it's the it's the same platform all right and the wagon has a panoramic sunroof which yeah that's nice and i really like the interior not don't, not too sure about the shifter that looks a bit weird uh but uh time to drive this thing around uh time to haul the kids around And just a just a little family family road trip, shall we? And I'm sure you can also. There's also a towing package for wagons because that's what they do in Europe as well. They if they want to go camping, they just like hook their camper up to a wagon. Whereas in America, you if you want to go camping, you get a truck or something. Which hey, I don't know. Personally, I would take the wagon. It looks cooler. Also, you can do a lot more stuff with the wagon than you would be able to with a SUV in my personal opinion. Also, wagons aren't as common in the States, so that just makes them all the much cooler when you see one. I mean, there is the occasional Volvo and Audi Avant, but other than that, there aren't that many here, which is kind of unfortunate because that, I feel like that's the entire untapped market here that for some reason car companies refuse to go into with, with a few exceptions, of course. Yeah, obviously, uh, the crash ball on the front is not going to be different. It's the back end I'm really interested in, which I am having trouble uh, trying to wreck. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go all the way down here. And we're going to stop here. And then we're going to go to the toe rack and uh, go and rear it. Give this guy rear ender. Also, the Tograk is a diesel version. Should probably mention that. There are diesel versions of this car. I mean, there should be. Because, you know, there are diesel versions of the normal V-Boss and Tograk. So it makes sense. Okay, crossball looks pretty good. Yeah. No artifacting going on. Looks pretty nice. Anyways, with that being said, on to the final mod of this video. Which, I'm going to be honest. I think this one takes the cake for the most innovative mod. Well, you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, the final mod that we're going to be taking a look at today is the Charrier Vivas SV, which is 
is definitely a very, very unique mod. I feel like this takes him heavy inspiration from the Ford Focus in some of its variants because, uh, well, I I'm going to tell you why in a minute, or I'll more like I'll show you why. But first things first, the first thing you're going to notice about this particular V boss is the obvious visual upgrade. You got a bigger grill, you got elongated headlights, you have a offset front license plate for that giant grill for air intake you have uh, some bigger vents on the hood you have a beautiful beautiful red color which i adore my the car i have in real life is very close to this color if not the exact color this is it, it the just chef's kiss and as for the back you have a these weird things. I don't know what they are. And you have the SV badging with the logo above the taillights, as well as a hatchback spoiler. Obviously, the uh, the trunk opens. Oh, and also a rear diffuser with center exhaust with a very unique exhaust tip. I have never seen an exhaust tip like that. As for the interior, obviously another upgrade. You have carbon fiber in the same red as the outside you have a different steering wheel which looks amazing as well as a dual clutch transmission and as and actually let's start this thing up so you can hear the engine that this thing has yes that is the sound of a v8 this thing has a v8 motor and other versions of this thing have a v6 as well as a inline six so yeah this thing definitely has power but let's uh let's actually test that theory svr cynic yes oh yeah this thing can do burnouts uh-huh actually okay hold on maybe i should keep it on uh no not comfort eco sport uh oh wait hold on uh, eco sport yeah we'll keep it on sport Keep things a bit tame for a minute and that's not the only feature this thing has i'm pretty sure however i'm not sure if this is the mod that has it i'm sure it is but if we uh, go here toggle intelligence speed assist toggle hill hold toggle emergency assist toggle lane assist toggle parking sensors toggle or collision mitigation like this thing has a lot of stuff so we're gonna Oh wait. Okay, no, never mind. It's been enabled. So what does it do? Like, does it do anything? What? Oh, he'll hold. Okay. Uh, emergency assist. Oh, parking sensors. Okay. Well, it seems like everything has been enabled. Actually, wait. No, we're not gonna free cam. We're going to open this thing up. We're going to see how... Whoa, hold on. Oh, okay. That's how it works. All right. So it doesn't let you go past the speed limit, it seems like. So we're going to turn that off. I said turn it off. Wait, what? Oh, that's the forward collision system. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's actually working. Okay, uh, forward collision mitigation, that's why. Let's turn that off. And boom, yep. Wow, this thing's durable. I mean, I'm sure that has something to do with the heavy V8 that's in the front. Man. Yeah, damage model looks pretty... Whoa, what the? What is going on? Um, that's not me. I'm not touching the controller right now. Uh, wait, hold on. Maybe I should turn off other things. Uh, lane assist. Uh... Oh wait, no, that I don't want that. Uh, emergency assist, uh, hill hold. What what's happening? Um. Um. Uh, hold on. Uh, stop. Stop. Cut. Okay. Um. Don't know what happened there, but now let's actually take a closer look at the engine inside this thing. So we're gonna open it up. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that V8, look at that monster. 
Yeah, it just barely fits in there too. Like you can tell it just barely fits. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a variant of the Ford Focus that had a V8 in it. I don't remember what the name of it was though. I want to say it was the RS, but I'm not quite sure. I know there was a version of the Focus that had a V8 though. And it was also all wheel drive, so there was that. All right, I don't know what happened there, but we're going to try out the parking sensors because that is something I am very interested in. So we're going to go in a town here and find a place to, let's say, parallel park. Uh, you know what? Let's try here. Actually, now we're going to go a bit down here. Why are you parked in reverse? That makes no sense. All right. All right, so... um. Local oh, parking sensors. They have been enabled. All right. And what if it makes a noise? Oh, it does. Oh, that's so cool. All right. And hill hold is also on. So I'm guessing if we put it in park on a hill, it will stay. Instead of rolling down the hill, it will just stay where, where it is. Come on. Oh, look at that in the lights change too. That is awesome. Shut up. I'm testing parking technology and this is awesome. I've never seen this. This is so cool. That is amazing that it has that, but there are more versions that this vehicle ha or this mod has to offer rather. So if we go to vehicle selection, go to Vivos, go down to the SV. This is the one we're in right now, and there is an even more powerful version, as well as a, I don't know what, the, special edition dedicated to the track model equipped with a twin turbo, high power, hyper powerful V8 motor, all wheel drive, 12 speed dual clutch transmission. And what about this thing? Race model, extreme powerful eight cylinder, race suspension, all wheel drive. Version has been banned in Europe. Terry has no idea why. Yeah, I wonder why with their strict regulations. Now look at this thing. Actually, th this is not in a very... Whoa! Oh, all right. This thing's got power. Yeah, I got SVX as the badging. The taillights look a bit different. They look a slightly more aggressive, if that makes sense. And also, it's an even deeper red. I love the color on this thing. Oh, oh, it's got a tail taillight. That's interesting. I don't know what was going on there. Is it lane assist on? I want to say it is. Oh, let's pull up the controls again. Uh, I, I forget what they are. Uh, lane assist. Oh, lane assist has been, has been disabled. Actually, let's t I want to test that. I want to see if it actually works. I We know that the parking sensors work and the uh, forward collision system uh, also works. Oh, it does work. That is so cool. Okay, well, obviously it has uh, some, uh, it needs some tweaks to be worked out, but the fact it works, that's so cool. Oh. Oh, guess that's what causes it to lock itself in reverse. Um, and apparently you can't get out of reverse. Yeah, all right, that's interesting. That's good to know. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, mod developer, you're watching this. Yeah, this is, it's an issue. Well, it's a funny issue, but still an issue nonetheless. I, well, I guess the last thing to do now is to take this thing off the car trip arena. So let's go and do that, shall we? All right, first things first, I'm gonna turn off everything just so that way I don't run into any, you know, issues. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is the, uh, this is the, the highest version, the top tier version with the twin turbo high powered V8. The It's got a different grill setup as well as a giant spoiler that is massive. It's a rally spoiler mixed with the SV spoiler. I actually like the look of it very much. But anyways, uh, last thing we need to do is turn off that. And also for some reason, this thing has um different Front and rear wheels, or I thought, yeah, no, it does. Yeah, I don't know why that is, but it's just something interesting to note. Jeez, this thing's got speed. Here we go. 
Oh, we're, at, we're already at 230. We leave the ramp around 220, 227, 228, and we are going at 660 meters, I think. And into the pool. Man. But yeah, that was the Terrier VBOSS SV, and this has been three mods that make the VBOSS all that much better. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All mod links will be down in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.